This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marjorie Greaves. The Curious Book of Birds by Abby Farwell Brown, Section 26. The Tufted Cap. One dark night, Master Owl left his hollow tree and went prowling around the world, as usual, upon his hopeless hunt for the prince's beetle nut as soon as he was out of hearing a long lean hungry rat crept to the house and stole the dainties which the lonely old bachelor had stored away for the morrow's dinner the thief dragged them away to his own hole and had a splendid feast with his wife and little ones but the owl returned sooner than the rat had expected and by the crumbs which he had dropped upon the way tracked him to the hole come out thief cried the owl or i will surely kill you come out and return to me my morrow's dinner the rat trembled with fear at these threatening words alas he squeaked i cannot do that for already the dinner is eaten my wife and hungry little ones have eaten it pity us for we are starving bah screamed the owl i care little for that since you have eaten it you shall certainly die and he began to scratch fiercely at the mouth of the hole the rat trembled more than ever but suddenly he had an idea which made his whiskers twitch hold he cried dear good master owl permit me to live and i will give you something which is worth many dinners something that men creatures value very highly and which with great labor and pain i brought away from one of their dens humph grumbled the owl let us see what it is the rat crawled timidly out of his hole with the peace offering and what do you think it was why a gimlet just a plain ordinary well sharpened gimlet for boring holes who cried the owl i don't think much of that what is it good for now the rat had not the faintest idea as to what the gimlet really was but he had another idea instead that why that oh that that is a very valuable thing it is able to give you the keenest delight i will show you how it works but you must do just as i say or it will be of no use who cried the owl continue with the directions well first you must stick the thing point upwards in the ground at the foot of this tree very good said the owl doing as was suggested and waiting expectantly for the next move now you must mount to the top of the tree and slide down the trunk Trunk, said the rat solemnly old master owl was certainly very far from wise that night for he obeyed the rat's word without a suspicion he flew to the top of the tree and then sitting back and giving a warning cry of hoo hoo coasted down the trunk with the speed of lightning but midway down he struck a knot in the tree and rolled heels over head and when he reached the ground of course he landed fast upon the sharp point of the gimlet just as the rat had planned with bloody head and hooting with pain the owl started off in pursuit of the rat resolved this time to kill him without fail the rat was nimble and his fear added to his speed but at last the owl caught him ruffled and ferocious the great bird was about to tear him in pieces when the rat once more begged his life it was only a joke he cried only a silly joke spare me this once dear master owl and i will give you something that you really need look at your bleeding head you cannot go about the world with that exposed spare my life and i will give you a lovely cap of tufted feathers to hide the bite of the wicked sharp thing made by man pray let me go dear master owl the owl considered for a moment and then decided to accept the bargain for he thought of putri balan the princess of the moon and knew that he should lose his last chance to win her if she happened to see him with this ridiculous wound in his head so the rat gave him a nice cap of tufted feathers which he wears to this day and the owl let the thief go free but after that there was a coolness between them as you may well imagine end of section twenty six recording by marjorie greaves kemble river british columbia